welcome to Third Wheel, the show where we talk about anything that we want to, or play any version of a game that we come up with. I'm Steven, and I am joined by Brandon and Grace. Say hello, guys. Hello. I'm severely sad. Let's why you, do this! <laughs> why are you severely sad? Um... <laughs> do, you, do you not know? <laughs> no. I do know, but that will kind of break some of the taboos I have picked out for our topic today. I don't know what you mean by taboo, and that kind of worries me a little bit. <laughs> mm hmm. So uh, let's cut the chit chat and get straight to what we're doing okay. today. <laughs> we have... This is like last episode was just small talk, which means no small talk for today. <laughs> we have lots of ground to cover with this. I one. Don't so the, like the last that. episode was the small talk. Uh, I think you. I think you can manage. It's not scary. So for all of our viewers who have been with us for a while, if you've listened in, even if you've jumped around to a few different episodes. As you've noticed, every single one of our episodes are explicit. <laughs> and so oh, no. <laughs> I had this conversation with Steven where he he pointed that out to me and all the episodes that weren't explicit were the ones he forgot to mark. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, today's episode is going to be family and kid friendly. Oh no. <laughs> so we're going to have some conversations that might make us mad or upset or might be borderline adult conversation. But if we do something that breaks a taboo such as cursing or saying something that you legally could not say around a kindergarten <laughs> child <laughs> as a teacher, you're going to jail. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You, <laughs> no, you will get a point against you, and the person with the most amount of points against them will be today's third wheel. Interesting. You told me I, it, I, it was not scary, but... um. Yeah. Uh. No, I personally thought this would be really funny because we're very passionate people, and I also have to like up, considering that I have a switch that I turn on and off at work. I know how to change my vocabulary, change... My very passionate word choices. <laughs> That's why at work I say, oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really wanted to say something just for the lulls, but I don't want to so, I don't want to get a point uh, so early so, on in the episode. Uh, so. so if we say a curse word, not only are we going to censor it so this stays kid friendly, but you're gonna get a point <laughs> against you. Uh, so how does the scoring get, like, if, if someone just says something, are we, are Okay, okay, so, for the most part, or? this is gonna be honor system. If you catch yourself, just be like, oh, dang, like, whatever, and take the point. <laughs> okay. However, if you say something, and someone is kind of like, hey, I think this is borderline, like, risky territory, the other two will, like convene and decide we'll spin a wheel <laughs> <laughs> no we're not going to spin a wheel the other two will decide i personally think i am pretty good at deciding because i'm very judgmental towards my coworkers. <laughs> no but uh i think i make a great tiebreaker because i'm so judgmental <laughs> no no i'm just i'm very particular i think because again I have to watch what I say around my kids. I love my kindergarten kids, but there is a professional boundary you need to maintain. There are things that you obviously can't say, you can't talk about, and so that just needs to be, like, scooted aside, essentially. You kind of have to keep that professionalism, which is really weird considering, like, you also have to have, like, a friendly demeanor, you know? Yeah. It's weird. It's a professional job where you have to maintain a personal relationship. It's a very difficult job to maintain, but you have to watch what you say is essentially the whole point. So, I thought it'd be fun. You guys could get a taste of what I have to do for, like, n like eight hours a day. <laughs> well, to be fair, you chose this path, so I don't know why I you're know. punishing us with this. <laughs> I think it's fun. You guys get a taste of what it's like to have to censor yourself and realize... Oh, hey, maybe I could get fired if I was a teacher, <laughs> because I can't <laughs> shut it off. I would get I would fired just... for if I were a teacher for not that reason, but <laughs> just because yes. I would not be good at my job. <laughs> Can I ask a clarifying question for yes. like, a certain word? Um, yes. So, like, are we talking about, like, we're just hardcore, like, just strict, like, if, if I were to say heck, 
No, <laughs> you can say that. Something <laughs> really, really weird about my school is we're not really that big sticklers about like like substitute words. Okay. Like holy cow, like stuff like that. We we don't really get on it like some schools do. Okay. However, if it's like the middle school H E L or like H E double <laughs> hockey stick, we're gonna like ignore that. We know what you're implying. Okay. Okay. Right. So essentially, what the heck or whatever, like that's fine as long as it's like roughly like mm, middle school at worst. Can I? And that's not talking about like that's when teachers are watching, not when they're alone at recess. Just can to clarify. Can I make up my own swears? <laughs> as long as but they're not know. like, as long as they're not like heavily implied to be a specific curse so word. So if, if I'm just like, what in the Arizona tea? <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Son of a banana. <laughs> and you know what? If we all end up just completely neutral, which I doubt, I have no tiebreaker, so we'll figure it out later. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you know what? If there if there's a tie between you two or all three of us, we can spin a wheel. How about yes. that? I'll yes. pull up the wheel of fortune wheel. <laughs> no, I will make the wheel. Oh, okay. I'll send you the link to the wheel of fortune wheel. <laughs> Actually, I was going to ask you for that later. But... Cool. <laughs> so just just as a trial run, I have a few topics. Um, mm. I mean, I'm kind of hoping they'll fill up the time slot. If you guys have ideas, you can pitch some. But for the most part, anymore. our trial... I know. <laughs> it used to be an hour, and we've gone, like, it was like, oh, what if it's an extra 10 minutes, thir like, t 20, 30, 40 minutes? <laughs> an hour and 10 minutes in the episode? We can go another 20 minutes. I think we're, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're fine. Our poor listeners that just have to listen to us ramble on for, like, 40 minutes worth of small talk in the beginning. They seem to enjoy it. <laughs> I think they enjoy it more than our topics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's fine. So... This one, we're starting off easy. It's just to ease us in. What is a time where you have been the most angry in your life, and what was it about? Like, why were you so upset? I know Brandon's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brandon, why don't you start us off? <laughs> uh, well, um, I, I will just go with this story for now because it is one of the most angriest <laughs> like, times that I've been the most angry. I'm sure there's been other, uh, I guess you could call it more legitimate anger that I've felt, but I can't think of that right now. But So, um, I'm sure others who have uh, gone the path of learning an instrument may or may not have uh, <laughs> faced this similar um, <laughs> situation uh mm -hmm. particularly uh i, I mean I, I did band in at my high school and i actually really enjoyed it i enjoyed clarinet and stuff so like, did i know. and i was never this aggressive as you were <laughs> yeah, i really enjoyed clarinet and the path i went down with that except for my senior year uh to fill in my extra elective slot i wanted to take beginner's band again <laughs> and so the new instrument i decided to learn was trumpet <laughs> and um, that you is can also see the absolute rage on his face <laughs> right now. Um, I uh, that's also where I learned where playing brass and uh, woodwind is very different from each other. Um, I, yeah, um, for I yeah for one um. For woodwind, my the, the band teacher is like, oh yeah, I know you have to have a fern on the or whatever, like whatever. And for for brass stuff, you have to have very loose. So it was just very opposite things. So I was basically by learning trumpet, I was undoing my uh, prop pot whatever pop proper posture for my lips and stuff like that. I can't think of the word for it right now, but. I, I was undoing that, and so it was really hard for me to adjust for trumpet. But got to the point. I, I'm the kind of person where, like, yes, I will, like, push through something when I'm very determined, but if I'm just continuously doing something, <laughs> I'm st like, I'm trying my absolute hardest, and I'm still not getting it, then I start getting 
upset. (laughs) (laughs) Upset. Yeah, I get very upset. Um, And the thing about Trumpet was that I wanted to sit there for hours and just keep going, but it gets to a point where your mouth just is, it just gives out. Like, just trying to practice, so it, no matter how hard I tried, I just kept just slurring a note or something like that. It just, like, it just, no matter how much I tried, my lips just gave out. So there's this one particular time, well, many times, actually, but this one particular time. <laughs> this this happened several times, but there's one particular time. <laughs> I, uh, I was playing a song, I was playing a song that was assigned to us, and, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I have it on video, actually, because we were required to, this was during COVID, so, uh, and we were required to record ourselves and, uh, send it into our band teacher, so I was constantly recording, so I have several clips, but this one, <laughs> and, um, I, uh, I, I, there, like, the few recordings beforehand, there had been signs that I was about to lose it, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I would mess up, I'd just be like, oh, like, oh, and I would kind of just, i just kind of tap my desk, or my chair, just, <laughs> and I just progressively got more aggressive, and finally, <laughs> and, and it just hit the nerve, <laughs> I, I was, I got, I think a little over halfway, I think I took like a five minute break just so I could give my lips some rest, and I got halfway through it. I missed, messed it up towards the very end, and I just, <laughs> I, I initially, I didn't even react, I just sat my trumpet down, I had it in my hand, but I put it down, and I just looked down, just put my hand, my head in my hands, <laughs> and then I thought about it for a good few seconds, and then I just started beating up. Oh, I, oh, I can't, there's so many words. <laughs> I just, it's one of the oh greatest my. things that I've ever witnessed in my life. We have a photo of this, so oh, our YouTube people. Man. You have a picture you get to see and enjoy. My, my um, oh, uh, I there's words I would like to describe this as. I just can't though, cause I would rather not get points. <laughs> but um, my arm, the arms of my chair, they were, they, mm, they got, uh, they were, they were not that. I, mm, they were. Yeah, uh, it was they, so, they got, it was so funny. They got, they got hurt. Now, Brandon, do you think that putting your hands on somebody else's things is the correct way to vent your frustrations? I think it's best that we talk out our feelings. <laughs> we need to work on our self-control and keep our. We need to work on our self-control and keep our hands to ourselves. Are you gonna always respond to our trauma? No. By, like, a, you know, okay. <laughs> no, that's that how I happened. respond to the, that's how I respond to the kids. Although I'm kind of like, why would you do that? I why do you now. think it's ever? Why do you think it's ever okay to put your hands on somebody else? I for for everyone at home, I am now saving this picture to my phone as to then <laughs> add it to the, for the YouTube people, and I forgot just how how. <laughs> You are in this one It's a one. Do you have the video? And you know what? I Do feel like Brandon's just a naturally angry looking person, which that's not who he is. If you like listen to our other episodes, Brandon's usually like the voice of reason on this podcast. <laughs> but for whatever reason, he just has a lot of pictures where he looks really angry. Like for example, we got pictures back from a track meet, and every picture of Brandon, <laughs> of him running, he looked so angry. Like, his face just looked so tense. Like, he was about to, like, like he was chasing after somebody. <laughs> like, that, like, did him dirty. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, that's what the coaches said. They said just, you know. Yeah. Oh, they didn't just say to for look it. angry. They just, they just said, you know, <laughs> oh, do, really? do whatever, do whatever you need to <laughs> do. Remember, before time. you run, look as angry as possible. Intimidate the opponents. <laughs> Literally. 
Oh my god. I love that. I love that picture so much. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I'm gonna look for the video now. So, in thinking of what mine would be, I have a lot of great contenders, but <laughs> I think for this one, I had a lot of witnesses, so I think this would consider... Oh no. <laughs> I think this one would be considered my worst um, meltdown. This okay. happened sophomore year very beginning of sophomore year so i had an ex who i will call mm, banana <laughs> <laughs> do you actually want me to use that name banana <laughs> do you want me to use the name banana absolutely okay so my ex Siri confirming my choice right now. Are you sure it said banana? Siri seems to like to interrupt lately. I don't know what's going on. So my ex-boyfriend Banana and I had a very complicated <laughs> relationship. And that was mostly because, you know, it's the beginning of high school and parents are still very involved in every aspect of your life. And so my mom didn't really want me with him because my grades were not great, to put it lightly. And so I told him, we need to keep this on the DL, essentially. <laughs> I was like, but in doing so, he like distanced himself from everybody in our friend group. And then didn't tell me about it, about like how it was making him feel and how like depressed it was making him feel and so like eventually he pulled me aside and was like well like are we actually going to get like back together like super publicly whatever and I was like I guess not just because my grades were still really bad and it didn't feel fair to him and so I was like yeah I probably like I guess not and then so he sent me this very long paragraph over text oh no and it was something along the lines of you have, there were a lot of um, not okay words, so I'm trying to think of how to change this. <laughs> it was something along the lines of, you're the reason that I messed up, you're a terrible person, uh, I'll never mentally recover from this. Like, it was like this verbatim, pretty much. Like, interesting. Like, it was like a lot of, um, again, no-no words in there, too. <laughs> So, essentially, he he was like, I'll never love again. Like, this is what happens when I trust people. <laughs> that Very, sucks, like, buddy. Yeah. So, essentially, I was like, dang, this sucks. But, you know <laughs> what? I I deserve it, I guess. Because, I, I mean, I'm the reason our relationship ended so poorly. See? That was a very short-lived feeling, because two days later, he got together with his new girlfriend. They're still together, by the way. And mm. the thing is, is he moved on so quickly, he started saying I love you immediately to her. And, like, he pretended like everything he had said to me didn't happen. And so this filled me with what I can describe only as... Rage. <laughs> so, yeah, I was understandably not happy, and it wasn't because he was with somebody else, because I think a lot of people thought that's why I was upset. They're like, oh, like, who cares, like, how fast he moved on, like, you ended it. No, I was mad because of everything he had sent to me about how he'll never trust and never love again, and then here he is two days later in love with his new girlfriend. <laughs> And so, yeah, I I was upset because he had blamed me for so much, which, yes, I was a huge factor in our relationship, but it takes two to tango, sir. Like, you're, you're not blameless. Your lack of communication, bananas, is also... <laughs> <laughs> is also had a huge role in it. And so, essentially... I was kind of keeping this to myself. I had confided in one close friend that, like, I was upset about it. But she was kind of like, you know what? Like, I know it sucks and it's annoying because they're also hanging around our friend group. But you know what? 
bananas is going to do bananas. You know, you can't <laughs> worry about him. <laughs> See, and I tried. I really tried. <laughs> But the thing is, is like a week or two late, I think it was about two weeks later, we had our sophomore retreat. And so we we all got invited to like this reception hall in Sacramento State for we we were basically broken up into um different groups and we do like different activities and stuff. It was very religious themed, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um I felt bad for my group leader because I was hijacking and I was being negative and I was being like super because I was so annoyed like with the whole situation and so I was like yeah whatever like I had such I had like the worst attitude (laughs) and so I also made it awful for my other group members that were there and so at the end the last exercise we did is we got to decorate our own little treasure boxes Mm -hmm. and um a lot of my com- and you were supposed to compliment everybody in your group. Everyone was supposed to write one compliment, and I got a lot of um, strong-willed, opinionated. <laughs> 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 so I just that was just funny. It was icing on the cake. But essentially, throughout this and throughout breaks and lunch, I'm seeing these two cling together. They're clinging like they are in one body. They yeah. are like. Um, putting their faces together every <laughs> every couple of seconds and they had these like uh matching couples bracelets and i was like on the verge like i was like are you serious after like i, I was like apparently this is never trusting anyone ever again <laughs> right <laughs> so essentially i get to the end and i'm looking at them And then, um, Dave, from last episode, Dave was like, hey, like, your mom is here, like, we can go home now. And so I look over at them, and I said, in front of our entire sophomore class. I I did see that. Yeah, yeah, in front of our entire (laughs) sophomore class, I yelled at them, and I said, blank you guys. And blank you for, and then I pointed at bananas and I said, and blank you for not telling me that you guys were dating. Because she was also my friend. And, I and so, <laughs> yeah, I, put, I said, blank you guys and blank you bananas for not telling me that you guys were dating. Which honestly should have been both. And so I left. It was like a mic drop. It was quiet <laughs> when I left. Because <laughs> they were like, what is this woman on? <laughs> and so, essentially, I had reconciled with her months later where we had a Galentine's and my close friend that I had talked to about this was like, are you comfortable if I invite her? I was like, yeah, no, that's fine. Like, I don't I don't mind. Like, I probably won't talk to her that much. Just don't really seat me near her. Apparently, don't seat me near her is directly across from me. <laughs> mm. And so, I had talked to her about it and she also kind of told me, like, I'm sorry, the way we went about it was also kind of awful because, like, she did tell me, like, she had major feelings for him while she while he was with me. So, essentially, like, when I was venting frustrations and stuff, mm-hmm. she was there. And so that also was, like, a sense of betrayal of, like, you probably also told him all the things I said, like, while I was upset, you know? Like, hey, granted, this was never anything bad. This was me being like, like, I can't believe you do this. Like, I feel like this was also when I felt like he was being kind of manipulative towards my feelings, too. Because, like, Got yeah, you. I was like, like, at that point, if you feel like a relationship is toxic, end it. Like, and then I'll be the problem. But then he was also being really, like, emotionally manipulative. Um. So, again, like I said, takes two to tango. So, essentially... I had a really large blow up and everybody heard about it. And then like junior year, I did have some people come up to me and they're like, Oh, you were the girl that was was yelling at our retreat. And I was like, yeah, that was me. (laughs) (laughs) How big was your guys' high school? Um, Um, we had about like 300 people in our, two, 300 people in our class. Yeah, I think, if I remember, I think the, 
I think we were told like coming in that our class was like the first one to break like 300 students. Yeah. Like it, it just, I've always been in a small school. So the idea of like people in your school not recognizing you from something, it just, it just, it doesn't sit yeah. with me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I got recognized for two things from random people. So I have been A, the girl that yelled at people. <laughs> during the sophomore <laughs> during the sophomore retreat and two the event from caught on camera where i got slapped across <laughs> the face and it was posted on the internet <laughs> uh, you must have been quite the person to meet at your high I, school. yeah i was a little infamous i think people were very um afraid that i was not mentally stable which is a fair <laughs> assumption I, I mean you did like what the year i first met you you did write in my yearbook you didn't write your name you just i did not sign yeah you, you signed it the crazy chick who you see screaming down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> because that's who you knew me as. You didn't really know my name at that point, did you? I don't think so. <laughs> you Yeah. So I, the reason I was confused as to why you wanted me to sign your yearbook. I was like, did I make that big of an impression? You think I'm that cool? But anyway, you can you can steadily see like the change of like um, the way I've signed his yearbooks. Like, freshman year? Nothing. Oh, wait, no, no. Freshman year is the crazy chick you see in the hallway. And then, like, sophomore year is like, hey, have a great summer. I'm so glad we got closer. Like, you know, like, 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 see you next year. Like, hope we stay close, whatever. And the next one is just like, pages of, like, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pages and pages. But yeah, no, you can see the steady, like, increase in our relationship if you look at those, those, uh, yearbooks. But anyway, I was upset, to say the <laughs> least. I, <laughs> I was not happy. Hmm. So yeah, I and I think right. I think you guys also know at this point if I'm annoyed, I I do not take let it go well. <laughs> <laughs> I am not one to let things die down. I want answers and I want them now. Nah. <laughs> Uh, I would say the the most angry I've ever been is also the same reason why I will never have, like, a major account at Wells Fargo anymore. <laughs> we're, we're, not we're not sponsored by Wells Fargo, so I can, you know, I can be upset and <laughs> vocal about it. <laughs> um, you know what? But... I will also never be at Wells Fargo because the one time I parked in their parking lot, someone crashed into my car. <laughs> yeah, because that's Wells Fargo's fault. <laughs> Absolutely. No, because they refused to give me the videotape that would have ah. shown who did it. Oh. That that's is... why I was upset. Because, like, the employees are trying to justify it by, like, being like, oh, well, you know, like, it's because we have older clientele, and you know what? Our cars get hit all the time, too. I'm like, that doesn't make it better. <laughs> I was like, you should be just as... Daily. I was like, you guys should be just as upset as I am. That happens all the time. I was like, look, I did not want to use your bank services. I wanted the... I wanted the spirit Halloween across the street. <laughs> But anyway, continue. So I'm I'm currently calling them because I'm dealing with a big credit card uh, fraud. So at the That's time, nice. I'm like 15, 14, 15, um, and I'm dealing with the fact that f like three to four hundred dollars of my account is just gone. Uh, and based off of, and I learned later through like the bank telling me transaction history that some guy in like Ukraine uh, just was like <laughs> mine uh, and just, <laughs> just, ripped, just ripped it right from my account. Well, you um, know what? I think he got his, uh, I think he got what was coming to him. Ukraine is coming <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, bro. <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, I think. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true because they're, they're, they held their own that whole time. I mean, it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's been over since the start. I would um, like to say we stand with Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, I would like yeah. to Yeah, that. absolutely. But, um, yeah. Oh, so... wait, that means we can't be heard in Russia anymore. <laughs> oh, it's fine, oh, it's oh, fine, oh, whatever, oh, keep oh, going. Ding, dang it. <laughs> Did you say ding, dang it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
But anyway, so I'm I'm like trying to call these people because in the past they have blocked my card after suspicious pur- uh, purchases when I've bought games on Steam. Like I will buy a game mm-hmm. on Steam and it won't go through, and it'll be like huh, your card was been locked because of suspicious activity. But oh then God. someone like uses my PayPal account to send someone else like three hundred dollars in Ukraine, and that goes through. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on the phone with these people. And I have to preface, I'm on our house phone. Like, not it's not a landline, it's just a detachable house phone. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on the phone with these people. I'm talking to them. I'm trying to, like, f- figure out what's going on. I'm trying to understand why they're blocking my Steam game purchases, but allowing some guy to run around with my money in a different country, on a different continent. Um, and I'm getting so frustrated with these people because they're not telling me anything on what to do. They're not telling me, like, um, what I can do. They're not even offering to, like, lock my card so that purchases don't go through again. They're trying to, like, it felt at the moment that they were gaslighting me and me thinking that I actually gave them the, the, like, either the permission or just gave the guy in Ukraine my money. You know, Um, I would never use the word gaslight with kindergartners. (laughs) <laughs> that's uh, all i'm saying uh, i'm not docking talk about the standings of ukraine <laughs> i'm not saying i'm docking you a point i'm just saying you're treading on thin ice <laughs> no that's not true as soon as they walk out the door I'll, I'll tell the kindergarten teacher oh my gosh that kid was gaslighting you <laughs> <laughs> kindergartners are huge gaslighters they're like that didn't happen. What yeah, are you no, talking they're... about? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Because if, if you don't know a comeback, you just gotta make them think that they saw it wrong. I, dude, always... I will literally see something. Like, I saw a little girl punch a little boy, and when I when I talked to her about it, and she fessed up, and she apologized, but when I told the teacher about it, because I have to tell her about bigger infractions, she's like, that didn't happen! I didn't do that! I was like, I was like, I saw it, dude. What are you talking about? You told me you just you just said that you did it. The first thing they ask, you can tell they don't really feel any like regret because the first thing they ask me after the apologies, are you gonna tell Mrs. So and So? But anyway, continue. Uh, yeah. So anyways, I'm I'm trying to talk to these people and they're just not being of any help. And like, I'm trying to keep my decorum, but like, I'm a high schooler. I don't have a lot of money, so when most of it goes away, I, I kind of want that to be fixed a little bit. Uh, and I feel like I have every right to just be upset with this person for not helping me. And I'm on hold for, like, over an hour span total. Like, I'm on the phone with these people for about three to four hours trying to figure out what's going on. And they've put me on hold wow. for like a cumulative span of about an hour, trying to figure Jeez. out what's going on. And Dude. the only justification <laughs> I can have for it is probably because they're dealing with a foreign thing now, because it's, you know, different country is where my money went. So they got to figure out, like, where over there it is so they can mark it down and all wow. this other stuff. But, yeah, it's such a long time on the phone with these people. And I, I get so frustrated because after, like, um, I get put on hold for the last time, right? And I'm on hold for 20 minutes. And I'm sitting there listening to their blaring hold music that sounds like the like the yeah. Oregon Trail Retreat style music. <laughs> but just at, like, 1,000 decibels. So I can't hear anything going on except I can hear when it's over. And I'm listening to this on a 20-minute loop. And after 20 minutes, all I hear is boop! And the phone hangs up, and that's it. <laughs> I, okay. The phone just hung up. You're on very me. passionate about this. I got so angry. I'm marching at like this whole the whole 20 minutes. I'm on hold. I'm pacing around my room. I got so angry that I grabbed the nearest thing to me and hucked it across my room. I just threw it so hard across my room, and Ow. it went straight into the wall. I who do you me. who do you bank with now? Is my question. I bank with an online bank called Ally, who is like my best friend. I love. He's sponsored. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, I love. I Ally. when I had card fraud, I went into Chase Bank, and after ten minutes talking to uh one of the accountants there, they're like. Okay, and then they gave me my money back and sent me on yeah, my no, way. Yeah, no, it should work that way. <laughs> okay, but the thing with this is, yeah. I wonder, I... okay, my weird thing is, is I wonder how they caught this. Because, like, 
Maybe it's because they know that I'm cheap and I don't spend a lot of money on stuff, but the actual places they, like, spent money on were not out of the ordinary. Like, it was, like, a Chevron and, like, a gas station, like, another, ga- like, actual, like, food purchases or something it's like that. you don't have And a then car. it was, like, <laughs> and what declined, like, what, like, the final thing that, like, declined it that was, like, the suspicious one was, like, $90 at Walmart. <laughs> I don't know how they caught it. I was I was wondering that entire time. I was like, you know, I've bought stuff at Walmart before. What made them think this particular one was suspicious? They just know how picky you are when it comes to specific things, and so they were just like, she never get that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ninety dollars? Yeah, maybe fifty at most. <laughs> All right, but yeah. Anyways, the closest thing to me went into the wall, and I wasn't even thinking. I just grabbed whatever's on my desk and threw it at the wall. It wasn't my mouse, my keyboard, maybe even, like, the desktop speaker. It was my phone. My actual phone. Oh! <laughs> I grabbed my, uh, my iPhone and Frisbee threw it straight <laughs> into the wall and left a really big hole, like, directly above my bed. And, uh, my phone just stuck out of the wall. (laughs) (laughs) And leaning on the broken parts of the wall, it was just hanging there. And I I looked, like, I was still in a heap of rage, so I wasn't even, like, thinking about what was happening. And then when I called them back, like, I was gonna call them back, and then I was just like, maybe I should take, like, five minutes to breathe before I called these people back who hung up on me. And I looked at my wall and was just like, when did this happen? <laughs> I just, the two things never connected for me. And so, for I, I never told my, parent, my, my parents about this either. I uh, just took one of my uh, bed... Uh, I have, like, bed back pillows so I can, like, lean up against the wall and not hurt myself. And I just set it in front of them. <laughs> just put it on my bed in front of the hole. What's so funny is me and my siblings did the same thing when we were children. My dad had these doors... But they were, like, hollow inside for whatever reason. So when my siblings locked me inside of a room, I, like, got this, like, large bulletin board to, like, ram the door. Like, that would have opened it. (laughs) And then it punched a hole into the door. (laughs) But the thing is, is instead of fessing up, we put a sticker over it. And then, (laughs) to hide the fact that this random sticker wasn't, like, suspicious at all, (laughs) we started putting more and more stickers on it, and it just became a sticker door. (laughs) Just covered the door in stickers. It's like the first episode of Regular Show, where they put a poster over the drywall. It's like like the entire reason why every time we went to the grocery store, we're like, stickers, can we have stickers, please? (laughs) (laughs) Can we have stickers? Because it was just for the door, <laughs> to make it less suspicious. <laughs> and we, my dad didn't find out until, like, ten years later when he was re-renovating the house so he could rent it out. Ah. And we're like, he's like, you guys need to take off the stickers for the new renters. And we're like, no. Uh, no. we have a confession to make. <laughs> and so we told him, and he's like, you know what? We thought he'd be like, Steaming mad. We thought he'd be like enraged, but he was like, you know what? I'm kind of impressed that you guys have managed to work together this long to tell a lie. <laughs> <laughs> because we uh, we did not have a good relationship growing up. We were constantly fighting, constantly going at it. Like we were not friends at all. Mm-hmm. So my dad was like, you know what? I'm gonna let this go because you guys showed teamwork <laughs> when you guys like <laughs> absolutely hated each other. The time never arose for me to actually like. Uh, my mom still doesn't know is the funny thing uh, of why there's a patch on my wall, but the time didn't come until like when we were <coughs> newly renovating uh, our house over the summer um, to where my mom was just like, hey, I need you to go, you need to take this, I need to take this plaster, and you need to go all around the house and patch up any holes or nooks in the wall, and I was like, perfect. So I patched the hole. And then I, I still have the pillow in front of it. <laughs> just because, I love that. Yeah, there's a big there's a big white splotch behind one of the pillows in my room, and it's, it's I love that a pretty so big much. Hole. Oh, but the 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 thing that was the greatest about it is that my phone was fine. <laughs> my phone was not damaged in any way. I threw That's it like good. a baseball under the wall, and it was just like, eh. <laughs> I'm good. I'm fine. So I was proud. All right. <laughs> Okay, are we ready for our next topic? Maybe. 
So this one is going to be slightly harder to tap dance around. Uh oh. Okay. We're going to be talking about the time our parents gave us the talk. Uh. <laughs> I never got it. I win. <laughs> I also never got it, Brandon. Your turn. No. no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Have fun, Brandon. <laughs> oh. Uh, why don't we talk about uh, why why didn't you guys ever get it? How'd you find out then if you didn't well, get the talk? Well, okay, that's you actually a really out. funny. That's a really <laughs> funny story, actually. So the thing is, is like I found out um, mommy daddy things from mutual <laughs> friends at school. My mom claims she told me, but she told me so young at the point that like I didn't remember, and so I like learned quote unquote when I became conscious through, like, friends telling me, mm -hmm. essentially. I was just like, whatever. The thing is, no one told me about periods. <laughs> 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 and so, I was just this little uneducated child walking around, not knowing that someday I was gonna get a period. And so, <laughs> and so I didn't have a lot of friends growing up because I was strong-willed and a opinionated rage <laughs> <laughs> and so when i did get a friend i had sleepovers at her house very often she had a single mom because her parents were divorced and so essentially her mom went um so and so can you get the box of tampons and put them in the bathroom and i was like what are tampons <laughs> and she was like oh you know they're for your period and i was like What's a period? <laughs> and she looked at me, because I was in, like, fourth or fifth grade at this point, and she was like, is this child for real? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I think she was genuinely concerned for the state of my education. <laughs> and so she looked at me, and she's like, that's when you bleed. Out of your vagina. <laughs> and so I was like, What? <laughs> and I was very scared. <laughs> I was like, "Excuse me," but yeah, no, that's that's how. I mean, obviously. And then, like the following year, we got like the quote unquote like official like education on what it was. But I got the unofficial version from my best friend's mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brandon. <laughs> so, Steve, <laughs> what what do you want? Right, what, so... what do you want to know? I, oh. I'm friends with Eric. That's all I need to say. <laughs> uh, okay. I didn't uh. need that. Well, also, my dad has like the same humor as your stepdad. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and yeah. So, but also stepdad, just, like, who ironically gave him the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of giving me the talk, he would just play movies of like r like r rated movies while I was <laughs> this so wasn't like this wasn't like hey you need to learn about this stuff and sat me down it was just while we're all eating dinner r rated movie there you go <laughs> year old me is just like Whoa. See, the thing is is my parents also did that but my mom would either cover my eyes or skip past the scene and my dad would just gaslight me into thinking that it was something else <laughs> like for example <laughs> if you've seen the movie Grease, there's this scene at the drive-in where he's, like, trying to grab her. And essentially, <laughs> she throws the ring at him and, like, leaves and storms out. And I was like, Dad, why is she so mad? And he's like, you know, she, um, he was bugging her. <laughs> 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 and so, both of my parents kind of, like, tap danced around that stuff. <laughs> my mom tried to like cover my eyes at some point, but I think that she just gave up eventually. <laughs> she just stopped trying because my dad was like, "But I want to watch this." <laughs> <laughs> Not my fault. He's young. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, okay. Well. So. So. Yeah. Actually. Now that I think about it, none of my actual like biological parents gave me the talk. Um. I, uh, Which I find uh, hilarious. I, uh, first, this was probably actually, like, I mean, I think I kind of had an idea of how things, like, worked, just not entirely, but, like, when I was actually, like, sat down and given the talk, it was, like, <laughs> seventh grade. Um, 
basically for like seventh and eighth or whatever, they would basically have someone come in and basically explain like the male anatomy, like the boys stuff like that. And so what is the boys stuff? I talked about our anatomy, our 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 parts, our stuff. You can Uh, elaborate. I don't know what's going to be considered. You, okay, I've got so many girls come up to me a day that are like, my vagina! Oh my God. No, they, also, Brandon, I did They have just, anatomy when, aware parents. When when Grace said that, I was like, hmm, let me look this up. Is this a kid friendly no. word? And well, uh, everything the thing says, is, say it, do it. So. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, no, that's because um, it's very important that when you are raising a child, it's very important that you use correct autonomy language because when something is wrong or something is hurt or something is not right, they need to use correct words to describe what is not feeling well. They can't say, like, my Mimi, you know? Like, (laughs) the doctor's gonna be like, what the hell is that? (laughs) What the hell is a Mimi? (laughs) So if I just describe what's good, that's... Yeah, you can, you can, I mean... Well, here's the thing, you can't give give us the talk. (laughs) The thing is, like, you can, you can just, you can say the word penis. Okay. But you can't tell us what it's used for other than potty. Okay. But you also have to tell us what he said, so you have to tap dance Well, but I kind of don't have a choice. That's what I'm saying. He's very straightforward. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm so, assuming I'm assuming that this is all off the record stuff. Right no, now. this is this is on the record. On the record. Okay, because then you have two points then, Miss Miss Teacher Woman. No, okay, no, because that that okay. That was <laughs> That's why I'm asking, it wasn't. No, off that the was <laughs> No, th- okay, no, my part I told you was off the record because Stuff and things no, 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 no. You said what? You said the doctor would say, "What the hell is that?" Like, what the <laughs> hell? <is that? laughs> so you have two points, a little mistake. What do you mean two? That's just one. I feel like you get two for saying it both, but you could just take one. Either no, way, it's one. <laughs> yeah, either way, yeah. <laughs> Dang it! Yeah. Okay, well you have to bleep I it out so it's so kid that. friendly. I, I didn't get to be no, That's why. That's why I asked him. Is this off the record? Because otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's on the record. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Freaking Mimi. <laughs> 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 Keep going, Brandon. All right, anyways, Brandon. <laughs> All right, so, so yes, yeah, so I, I taught naturally. I, I let my mo- my let my mother know that, uh, that yes, this stuff was happening, or whatever. So then uh, she, she um, delegated that. Sorry, <laughs> ah, <laughs> <laughs> my stepdad. <laughs> my stepdad. <laughs> well, we've already used his name. I okay. thought. I, I could no. over it. Yeah, so, yeah just, um, just newt newt over his name. <laughs> my my stepdad. Um so one day I get back from school and he's like Brandon, drop your things. Come outside with me. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell he's dreading this talk. <laughs> and so he sits me down on our little uh little swing chair thing. <laughs> Oh my god, I know exactly what chair you're talking about. I've sat on that chair. <laughs> so we you dread sitting sit- on that chair now, Grace? <laughs> <laughs> they got rid of it when they uh-huh. sold the house. Yeah, so. it, it, they'd sold with the house. <laughs> yeah. I've um, sat on that chair so many times. <laughs> so, so I, we sat down. We're just kind of sitting there swinging. And he was like, he started it off with like, so uh, your mom told me like what they're talking to you about in school and stuff. And uh, so, uh, you, you kind of know where I'm going with this, right? I'm like, I'm like, yeah. And he's, and then, and then he's like, he's like, all right, well, I'm not gonna, you know. Hello. If hold on. he's thinking. <laughs> okay, I was like, did okay, I just break. <laughs> so. It's okay if you okay. use very general, bland Catholic language. You're fine so because this I, is this language. So if well, I no, like because if you it. explain it very generally and broadly, like they do in Catholic school, that's fine. Because in California, they're still re- required to teach sex education. Yeah. Okay. So basically, 
this wasn't exactly what it's what he said because he was I would get a point, but he's like, you know, I'm not gonna mess around with you about this. I'm gonna be straightforward. Oh no. <laughs> and so he's like, basically, you know, you have a penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I women, hope so. <laughs> women, women have vaginas. And so No, he like he told me, he told me what it is, but basically not to like say he said you just you said you put those two together and like that's that's how that's how that's how it goes and it then he basically started debunking all this other stuff that here like oh you might get it from like kissing a girl too much or so that's 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 not true like he I, again i he i hope that's language. not true he, he used he used <laughs> he's other language just to, doing he, myth busters <laughs> yeah, he, yeah he used other language to say how straightforward and lies they were but basically yeah and he was like i think another <laughs> one was uh this man yeah, is if a myth not, if you if you uh if you hold their hand too long or something like that it's not gonna <laughs> dude where, weren't you like 12 at that point 12 13 oh, seventh grade so yeah 13 <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna say i was 17 uh <laughs> <laughs> no i heard that too <laughs> so yeah but no no he uh he was very straightforward with me he did not uh he did not uh the only thing that he really just dragged out was just getting to the point of that we were going to have the talk. And then, yeah, I know he was very upfront about it. So, What do you think? Is that worthy of a talk or was he vague enough? Or a point? Is that worthy of a point? Why would he need a point? I'm saying, was it vague enough, do you think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're just consulting. Okay? <laughs> There's yeah. nothing wrong with consulting. Can I tell you what he actually no. said off the record? Yeah. After. After. Yes. Okay. <laughs> or now. Maybe. Might yeah. as well. Keep the train Might going. Might as well. You already have to edit. All right. We got time for maybe like two more quick ones. Okay. If you want to stay at an yeah. hour. Yeah. Uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I would still say that we shoot for just two more. Okay. <clears throat> so. This one is less mature and more frustration. Interesting. So these are instances where we've been brushed off or belittled or invalidated because of your political beliefs and or because <laughs> and or because you refuse to pick a side. Ah. So like if if you like don't even want to like be like, hey, I don't want to talk about this, people are like, oh well like People like you are the reason, like, our, our, our democracy is dying. Uh, I do have to say that I don't think I've ever gotten frustrated in that encounter, purely because of the fact that, like, emotional composure is, the, is really the key to winning any sort of, like, political debate. The second, I guess, like, like they keep in girl boss. Yeah, but, like, the <laughs> second that, like the other party starts getting emotional about some sort of discussion it doesn't become a discussion and so therefore it's like okay i i'm glad to see that like that like you your emotions tie into like your logic i i'm not gonna fault you for that but now i see no reason in like having this discussion with you because it seems like it's more not gonna be like a discussion and it's more gonna be uh you're gonna tell me that i'm wrong okay stop time. mansplaining and just tell me your story so <laughs> any single encounter i've had has been in that sort of like manner but only one time have i ever like gotten frustrated uh i was talking to I was talking to our intern Randy about some stuff, and he mentioned uh, Randall. This, he mentioned this uh, this girl who I'll just refer to as uh, uh, to Jay. Mimi. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll refer to as Mimi. So so Randall is talking to Mimi, and it it baffled me because I knew Mimi from my middle school. She was a grade below me. I never actually was like around her, but I knew who she was, and so I was confused on how Randall knew her because she didn't go to our high school. And he was talking about how he was having like a big big discussion with Mimi, and it was not a discussion. It was just a, it's just a flat out argument over Instagram because of the stuff that she was posting in regards to the Black Lives Matter movement when it first started. Um, 
Randall, Randall was getting very, very aggressive, and she was responding back, and I was, like, seeing all their stuff. I was seeing what she posted, and I was just like, I might not agree with what she is saying, but, like, it doesn't matter. She can do whatever. It's not affecting me. And I don't remember it, what what it was, but she posted something that I was just like, ooh, okay, I, mm, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not just, like, false. It's... It's like, it's 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 mudslinging. Like that's no. Yeah. <laughs> so so I I was just like I would never actually like do this, but I was for the first time was just like, all right, I'm gonna message her and just be like, you wanna you wanna like explain Mimi Mimi you wanna explain this a little bit to me? I wanna I wanna understand your thought process in case I'm understanding you wrong. And again, I don't remember exactly what it was, but then it blew up into like this huge thing of her like attacking me for not supporting the entirety mm -hmm. of like BLM and I basically summed it up to being like, listen, I don't like the political movement of it. All rights for for everyone, and I especially uh, like appreciate the fact that like people are standing up to talk about like just racial injustice in America. Yeah, absolutely. But the political background that is t taking over it is not okay, and that's why I don't support it. Like, I'm yeah. not gonna just go up to any any single person uh, and tell them I don't respect your rights. You suck. Like, yeah, I'm not no. But, like, if they're going to use that for a political gain, then absolutely I'm going to go up and be like, no, that's not cool. But, like, the, th the thing she said had something to do with, like, the defunding police aspect and other things like that. And I was just like, you realize that makes no sense? And I used, like, my sister being a cop as, like, that that affects families on levels you couldn't actually like comprehend as well. Yeah, they're not going to take it out of the budget. They're taking it out of salaries at the end of the day. Exactly. And I and then like the whole thing raveled back to like her only argument to anything that I said was just oh, your white privilege is showing. And I and it, the, she said it like three or four times. And then she's the white, time, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she is. Um, <laughs> and she's she's white. Her parents are rich. Uh, she attends because she doesn't want to go to a private school like she didn't want to go she did go to a, our private middle school but she didn't want to go to my school because of the people that were there that she didn't like so she told her parents that she wanted to go to Carson uh and like she like her parents were like relatively wealthy it's just a bunch of other things that screamed yeah. like hypocrisy but after like the fourth time I was like all right you want to claim that uh, my my family has declared bankruptcy three times in its past. I have grown up barely being able to afford school. My dad ha was never around when I grew up because he was working like day and night trying to be able to get money so that we could afford to live outside of cardboard boxes. Like my dad yeah. was the, my dad was the only income. Um, like the only other reason that I was able to do other things is because of the work that my grandmother did in her past and she helped finance us. Like I don't have white privilege. I had parents who did a good job. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. I got really upset. Cause it's I just feel like, like you can't yeah. No, no. I feel like there's a huge misconception of like people being like, Oh, you have white privilege, which is why you think this way. Like I 100% believe that white privilege is a thing. But I feel like they chalk up every single opinion to white privilege, and that just gets me. Yeah, you're. It, it <sighs> comes down to the point where a lot of people are like, "You can't disagree." On, it's or like, you, you, yeah. It, it's privilege. like that's the only defense at a certain point where it's like, no matter how much you have to back something up or whatever, at the end of the day, it always becomes white privilege. And I'll say this, and this was really unpopular at the time, and I stand by it. Uh, a lot of people were not happy with me and they they told me that they were not happy with me over it for lack of better words and there were people <laughs> that were like thank you for saying this i condemned the people breaking into stores in the black lives matter movement because i thought that it was absolutely disgusting that people were justifying it because that was not the black lives matter movement that was people taking advantage that was just, were, yeah people who came into the mob and and that's an that's the thing that's like it was literally opportunist it wasn't the black lives matter movement so in justifying it with the black lives matter movement not only are you giving it a bad name and undercutting the movement you're basically forcing people to be okay with this yep. you're like normalizing this and that's not okay yeah you know like that's not 
Like, again, like, I have never seen white people change their attitudes so fast. There was this girl that I follow, and she's like, so what if it's a couple stores, whatever, like, Black Lives Matter, whatever. But what people don't realize is it's not all Targets. It's not all Walmarts. And so, like, a few weeks later, she was, like, on Instagram, and she's like, I just don't understand, like, my aunt's a small business owner who supports the Black Lives Matter movement, and they, like, ransacked her store. And it's like, well, that's the problem. The problem (laughs) is, is, like, it's not a statement about like stores stances or like bigger like chains whatever it's about taking advantage of a situation and that's yeah, what it that was. was just that was because just karma coming back i'm and... i'm a huge mm-hmm. supporter of black lives movement and the 2020 like you know surgeons really upset me because i saw so many like social justice warriors online saying like justifying justifying like um they were like justifying all this like ransacking and violence and whatever else right Mm -hmm. but then a year or two prior when black lives matter like was blocking the entrance to the king's game to drum up awareness for black lives matter i have never heard so many white kids in my life the same kids that were like drumming it up during 2020 saying you know there are better ways to call attention to it than like you know like uh like hurting people or like uh, you know inconveniencing other people like that's awful like that's what got me it's like the hypocrisy yeah like it just it's like and it's like of course i can't say that because they're like i've learned and i've like <laughs> i've learned things and it's like no you haven't you you I just understand now. that now it's not socially acceptable but you don't regret it you yeah. meant what you said in the moment and that doesn't change ignorance doesn't change you just learn to adapt. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's, oh, yeah. that's just me. <laughs> that's probably the most frustrated I've got in that era, though. I don't usually get frustrated with that I mean, too much. My parents taught me there are certain things you don't talk about, and that's race, religion, and politics. Did I follow all those rules? Absolutely not. I thought that was but... things you don't discuss at the dinner table. Mm, well, that's just what my parents taught me in general. You don't talk ah. about it with anybody other <laughs> yeah, than my, family. My family was, that's, that's not what you talk about at the dinner table. Your, your mom's mm. just like, just never talk about it. Don't, don't do it. Well, no, it's like at school with people you don't know who will hold what you say against uh, you to the okay, letter, no matter true. like what. Because if I say something politically incorrect in front of you guys, you know it's like a blunder, right? Like, you mm. don't think I'm a terrible person. You don't think I'm racist. Like... You guys know as a whole, I was a huge supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that went on in 2020. There are very specific aspects to it, however, that I did not. And so I can say that, and you guys understand that, but then there are other people that will take everything I say out of context because it doesn't fit this itty-bitty little box Mm -hmm. where everything's perfect in their views, you know? And so that's the thing. You know, like, everything you say out of context, mistake or not, is, oh, you made this mistake, that means you mean it because you slipped up, because, you know, you, you were mad, so you spoke the truth, whatever. Like, that's the way it comes across, and it, mm. ugh, it's frustrating. Hey, Brandon, I, I'm going out on a limb here, but I think I know what your story is in regards to this. Is it the thing he has a story. Me, is it the thing you told me recently about what happened in your core humanities discussion? Oh, uh, I guess, uh, well, I don't know, because... <laughs> It didn't like pers- I was not personally involved in that discussion because I didn't want to be involved in that discussion. I mean, you um, don't have to be involved. You just had to be there to witness it. Uh, his he, his story yeah. wasn't <laughs> even story didn't involve him. Yeah, because uh, we um, mm-hmm. yeah, you you were, you were quite frustrated, my <laughs> uh, uh, well, to share for the viewers. <laughs> If that is your story. I actually wasn't sure what my story was going to be because I was just going to start out with, like, how I, like, on the political compass or whatever, like, I've taken the (laughs) test and I am, like, right on the center, but that's not because... I mean, there are some that I'm... Some issues or whatever that I am more neutral on just because I am aware I'm not, like, fully educated on them and before making a decision about them, like, I would rather, you know know whatever but then uh, but a lot of it too is like i did 
Texas, I do have like mixed views coming from like all sides or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it all just kind of evened out in the middle. But like, yeah, and then I I know like yeah I I do feel like <laughs> I, I understand part of it too I guess but like yeah I know I know that there's a lot of looking down upon being neutral and and, and some issues I guess yes I can see that but for other ones if there's just the ones where like you genuinely aren't sure about or just can't give an answer on I it really annoys like. The people who like get in your face about it and tell you like you're a horrible person because <laughs> you, don't need you haven't decided on a particular issue. I think yeah. That. Uh, I um, told someone in my life I was a centrist, and she looked me dead in the eyes and she said, "Centrists are the reason that this country's gonna die." <laughs> and I was yeah, like, "Okay." I think they they view like middle ground centrists as like indecisive and it's like look that just means i hate all politicians <laughs> equally that means i dislike <laughs> all of you <laughs> yeah no i don't like or dislike anyone from a specific party i hate you all until you prove that you're worth not hating <laughs> you're, you're guilty until yeah, proven fair. innocent <laughs> literally like honestly if you're a politician you have dealt with like corrupt dealings Directly or indirectly, that is, like, almost completely undeniable. Like, if you look at, like, the insane amount of charges, like, legal charges of, like, senators alone, yeah. like, 70% have legal charges against them, anywhere from, like, DUI to, like, sexual assault. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, they but anyways. <laughs> uh, but the... Instant that Steven is talking about. <laughs> um, this happened in my core humanities discussion. Um, and uh, I... Um, <laughs> uh, so, I guess to start off, the, I went into that class with my professor telling us that uh, the discussion that they got, the section before us, is very, very heated. And, like... He told us that both, like both of our the sections that he does our discussion for, like Corey manages with. He's like, oh yeah, no, both of you guys, both of you guys are just non, not talkative like at all or anything like that. And so him saying that it got heated was like kind of like, ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, so I sat down and funny enough, um. There's this one guy, uh, we did, like, this is, this is kind of related, so, but, uh, but just, I guess, uh, context, uh, there's this one particular, uh, person that, uh, <laughs> um, he's very, uh, overly, aggressively passionate about some of the things that he argues for, and, um, he's, like, not afraid, he's the kind of person who will, like, He's not afraid to, like, get in your face about it. And so, he's very, yeah, very strong opinion and uh, will get in your face about it. Um, like, for example, we did, like, a Columbus unit or whatever, and he had very <laughs> strong opinions about, like, Columbus, whatever. But that, that's side story. But basically, he showed up for, like, the first few classes and then hasn't showed up since. <laughs> this particular day, of course, he shows up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so the topic of conversation uh we were talking about uh kind of like pre like world war one like world war one stuff whatever and how kind of or and then like world war two happened and how kind of like the lack of just like men being sent over or whatever or well the men being all the men being sent over or whatever um how that led up to, for women's roles to kind of be be stepped up and stuff like oh that. my gosh Absolutely. i don't even want to know where this is that, going that yes you do to, that, yes, that you led do. to uh it led to uh, uh we did a section on women's rights and stuff like that so the topic of discussion for this particular class was uh the male privilege checklist <laughs> um and i was like okay 
Uh, it's like, I mean, I, I, Grace, you have actually told me a lot of like stuff about like male privilege and stuff. So I was already aware of like a lot of the things. So I was like, okay, I kind of, yeah, know, like yeah. going in. I go thing. off on Brandon a lot. I'm like, you need like... to check your privilege. Cause someone... <laughs> <laughs> every <laughs> time, every, okay, every time I feel like I've experienced some sort of like discrimination or like some sort of like objectification or whatever. I'm like Brandon, you are so privileged, <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> uh, so yes, I was I was aware of like a lot. Were there of the any things. that I missed? I'm curious. Oh no, there was like over. Hold on, I don't know. No, the list has 45 items. Oh, I want to hear these when we're done. Okay, uh, but basically, basically, um. So yeah, so he's like. So my professor's like, okay, yeah, we're just going to go through some of these. We just, just want to have a discussion about these, right? And what your <laughs> thoughts are on it. And, like, do you agree? Just, like, why and all of that stuff. So, we're like, so I'm like, okay. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> like, and so the very first one, uh, um, the very, like, first one, like, the first one, uh, I'll just read it just because it's here. Uh, my odds of being hired for a job when competing against female applicants are probably skewed in my favor. The more prestigious the job, the larger the odds are skewed. Yeah. And so he went over that. Yeah. He said that one. And he just picked the a girl sitting right in front of him. <laughs> First thing that she says... <laughs> not related to this at all. Is, uh, First of all, I hate all men. Like, me too I, I was me like, too like, and though she like dead like looked at like the room and just said that and yeah no that got that got a few boys wild. <laughs> like, well no i think i think the reason people are so upset is because they don't understand from a young age you are instilled to have a fear of men yeah you were taught to fear men as a child, especially as a young girl. And so that doesn't go away. And as you get older, it only gets worse. Because the thing is, is a lot of parents, and I still see it like with my kindergartners, they are taught boys will be boys, and that hasn't changed a lot. Like, I see so many mothers, like, raising like these boys that they're terrified of because their fathers like validate their like sexist misogynistic ideals and it's really sad yeah i was just i mean i'm not justifying what she said but i think <laughs> i think men have a hard time recognizing that privilege the same way like we as white people have a hard time recognizing that we have white privilege because it's not something we actively think about it's you know? the it's the I forget the specific word uh, like term for the word, but it's the use of all and never and always things like that. Uh, absolutes that's what it is. It's the, it's the use of absolutes that is the problem. <laughs> because what happens no matter what in every person's mind, if something at any point is said, just like I hate all men, I hate all boys i hate all teenagers if you're a teenager you gotta be like you think on that statement you hear from a person you're just like okay well you were you were a teenager your parents were teenagers that's exactly you how i teenagers. feel about people that say they hate kids exactly so it's like you were a kid your parents were kids. If you hate all kids, you indirectly are hating on th these other things. And it's just like the use of absolutes makes absolutely no sense when, <laughs> when you're arguing for something. Because if you're using an absolute, you have to assume that there's nothing that can disprove that. And I, mm. I don't like when people use always. or always. Yeah. Well, so anyway, what, what, I hate all men. Continue. Um, <laughs> but what particularly frustrated me about this is that one, there was no reason for you to say that. And, like, my professor literally said that we were trying to open this up for discussion by saying that you were asking for, like, arguments or some sort of just, some sort of opposition. Like, you just, you, and, and then, yeah, kind of from there, it kind of derailed. And there was actually no actual conversation. It was just more back and forth arguing. It was just people like, being uh, defensive. Yeah. <laughs> and I and love the text that Brandon yeah. sent then, me. He just is then, like, like, okay, fair enough, but was that really necessary? 
Yeah. Wait, then, wait, you said that about what she had said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You said fair enough, but was that really necessary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it just derailed the possibility of having like a civil discussion about it. <laughs> And, then... and that's that's like the thing too though is like everything I've noticed on the internet and I'm guilty of this too is like every time it's like the equivalent of like men doing like women with the little like T emoji oh, yeah. or whatever <laughs> it's like w women do like the um I hate men with like a heart emoji you yeah. know it's like it's like constant attacking on both sides like every time the other gender does something wrong or stupid it's like you condemn it to the whole gender. Oh, it's a retaliation, which can, yeah. Yeah, it contributes to the overall problem. I don't know. It's um, just, yeah. But, but then, yeah, moving on. For, so, yeah, basically that whole class was just arguing. I was sitting there just like, I want to leave. <laughs> you know what? So, Those classes are my forte. Throw some couple elbows um, in there. But really <laughs> also irked me <laughs> was... Um, <laughs> midway, midway through I read this. further into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, midway into this, I, hold on, I don't remember, I, I'll, yeah, we can figure out which number, it, light item, whatever this is. Uh, one of the items, it had something to do with, like, for, like, all religious or religions or religious organizations and stuff most of the leaders are men or something like that or most that's of because, the figureheads are like men that's because they come from countries where societies are patriarchal that and, is a cultural yeah. thing yeah. yeah so it i mean it comes from like religion stems from culture and the culture is a patriarchal society and any matriarchal societies that have ever existed have been wiped out and like erased by patriarchies because yep. they don't like the idea of them. So, they don't want to give women ideas. <laughs> oh, also, the only thing that I learned from my anthro anthropology class that I took my freshman year was that those societies, if they weren't wiped out, they fell apart just because the dynamic was different and and just naturally wasn't built for long term survival. So they were either disbanded or just white uh, or just like wiped out or just just fell fell to the to, to just you know the harsh the harsh world. Mm -hmm. It just. I just how it works that's interesting because i've actually heard the opposite i mean i guess it's like you know like everything else some societies fail and some like succeed but i've heard the opposite that some that the reason a lot of them fail is because matriarchal societies are not like aggressive where like patriarchal societies like have militaries and constantly fight for more land and to conquer things mm -hmm. matriarchal societies weren't like that and that's why they failed because they were conquered by patriarchal societies, obviously, but... Yep. You know. Uh, Moving yeah, on. Yeah. But yeah, no, like, yeah, no. So, like, yeah, no. My I kindergartners would point. love this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understood the point or whatever, like, yeah, no, I wasn't, like, disagreeing with it or anything, but what irked me <laughs> was the argumentative kid that I mentioned earlier. He, he raises his hand. <laughs> and once again... Nothing to do with the <laughs> point or the conversation to be had about it. He's like, instead of like saying, like whatever, or like at least related to it. Was he's it like, like a women oh, in the kitchens? No, no, no. He's like, no. He's like, he's like, oh no, I'm a proud atheist. I I hate all religion and think like it's like then shut the <laughs> up. You don't need to talk. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes! She points for Brandon. So passionate. Oh my god, I love listening to this too. I, I, Brandon's discussion is on Tuesdays, and I don't have school on Tuesday, and so I woke up from his first text that just literally says, I'm afraid, and he didn't say anything for like a solid minute, and I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> and I, I woke up. I, I started to wake up and I did my routine and just completely forgot about it and went to like go do something for an hour. Came back and there are four messages from Brandon. I was like, what just, what did I miss? <laughs> and but, yeah. Oh, man, oh man, no. I, no. I loved reading this. Okay. 
Well, Anyways, continue. So I got that point. Rage. Okay. <laughs> um, but I was like at that point, like, okay, like fair, like, like okay, like I, that's your opinion, okay, but. If, the, if you're not gonna actually like talk about the point, then just don't talk. You didn't need to speak words. You didn't need to open your mouth. You say that as if I don't jump from topic to topic like every well, two seconds. Well, no, like I felt like it, it was just pure, just I, there was no, and then of course that that also like no. Oh. <laughs> that 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 kind of led to like the other class, like the rest of the class, just kind of like yeah, a pile on top of it. It's like the whole point of this class was to have a discussion about this, and rather you just made just made it not that. Like there was no middle ground, no attempt to come to a middle ground, and that's what frustrated me. <laughs> <laughs> I told Brandon that he should have invited me because even even if like I wouldn't have like f tried to find middle ground, I totally would just play devil's advocate with those. People. I like how you say invite as if it's not like a class. No, oh, I know, I know. Sign up for. <laughs> Listen, I mean, to be I'm fair, sure I'm sure a checking. lot of the <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of classes don't check. Like at where uh, I go to school, discussion. it's small, and they would notice if you just never showed up. But honestly. <laughs> If you showed up claiming to be somebody else, they wouldn't doubt you. I, I'm oh, sure actually so the professor the would though. know if I came in for the first time in 13 weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, because the because for no, my that's core what I'm humanities saying. class, for my core humanities class, like we have a big lecture and that's like a hundred kids or whatever, but the discussion sections only have like 20 people in them, mm -hmm. and he takes well. 15 or 20, but he takes attendance every day, so he knows all of our names and what we No, no, I, I know. I had a class that worked exactly like that. I'm he just saying, what, like. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, if it's, like, one of the lectures, you could get away with it. However, like, at my school, there's no way to check who you are, because who who's going to go to a class under somebody else's name? That's a waste of time, right? <laughs> like, so I'm saying oh, if you want... Yeah, guy's yeah, life. Yeah, so I'm yeah, saying, yeah, like, yeah, if I wanted yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. I could go to one of my roommate's <laughs> classes and be like, hey, I'm so-and-so. And nobody would question me. We had nobody. A, we, we had a kid in our... Um... CS219 class who took our <laughs> midterm even though he wasn't in the class. He, he, like, halfway through the time, someone got up and we're all like, what? Well, how? And then he, he set the paper down, he's on his way out the door and our professor's like, oh, you didn't put your name on this. And he's like, oh, actually, I'm not a part of this class, sorry. And he just leaves. <laughs> I, what I could only assume is that he came in with one of his friends, his friend forgot to mention that they had a midterm, and so when he sat down and a test started being passed out, he was like, well, uh, uh, uh. That's yeah. hilarious. Nothing funny happens in small classes, because it's hard, because you don't blend with anybody, you stick out like a sore thumb, because there's know. only like 20 <laughs> kids a class. I don't know if that's true. We have a relatively small CS class, a math of CS class this year, and me, mm. Brandon, and Aaron just constantly are dying of laughter. <laughs> More of the fact that Brandon is losing his mind, but, like, <laughs> then Aaron and I are laughing at Brandon unable to control himself, but, nah, this last class, the TA for the class went out to grade the quizzes. <laughs> Um, and then when he came back, he didn't, like, just try to, like, slowly walk into the class. He didn't, uh, and he also didn't, like, just take the closest seat either, which he usually does. And he went, beh like, behind the teacher, and he didn't do it in a manner that was, like, not distracting, just walking. He ducks and Naruto runs across the room and then sits down at the other end of, like, the, the little classroom that we're in. And we're all just like, what? 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 You guys also are at a big school, so even if you have small groups, you have more variety in people. I don't have that. Oh, yeah, I have really absolutely. boring people from the Bay Area that are like, Haha, I get to go to San Francisco on the weekends. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's, that's, those are the people I deal with. And they're annoying. <laughs> Alright, so we went a little long on that time. last one. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, We're so, done! No. So, so, um... The <laughs> it's a tie! Is, no. The standing is between Brandon and Grace, so... I like how you were keeping track as if, like, this wasn't my episode. <laughs> well, it's as if, like, 
it was only the two <laughs> times that it happened. So why are you sending the movie again? What? <laughs> oh, did it? Uh, did you get you it the first it twice, time? Yeah. Oh my bad. And they my both phone told sent me within that. an hour period of each other. <laughs> oh my. Phone Don't worry did about it. I just received the trumpet video, so I will play that uh, now. My phone told me that uh, it it didn't go through, that it failed to sign. My bad. So uh, anyway, we're moving on. How are you guys gonna determine this tiebreaker? <laughs> I thought we said wheel. Uh, oh yeah. You, all right. I guess. I mean, Stephen. Cool. Unless you can think of something more interesting, Stephen. I have a coin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay. Next to my desk. <laughs> Okay, I'll do tails. <laughs> okay, okay we're gonna, doing the I was call. I was, kinda, I was gonna call heads, so that worked. I know. Well. That's why I always. That's why I always pick tails because you always pick heads. Am I catching it and flipping it, or am I just yeah? Letting it drop? You're catching okay. it and then flipping it over on your palm. All right. Okay. I'm. I'm not looking at it, but I think I remember the grooves of it. <laughs> I'm gonna let suspense build up here. Ready. Insert copyrighted music. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> we, it, does the winner of the coin toss be the third wheel or is the loser of the coin toss? Loser, I, I, I assume. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was gonna say okay, I, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, it's Tails, Brandon, you no! are the loser. <laughs> no! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> One episode I will say is that this. it is kind of fitting, too, because your reaction was way more visceral than Grace's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I just said mine kind of casually. You said you were so aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> yours, yours rolled off. Mine, and I was like, also, wait a minute. <laughs> also, mine was like of a lower status. <laughs> Brandon just went for it. Mine, <laughs> it's like, I got one to give. <laughs> mine, okay, if we were talking in school, mine would have been a stern warning. Yours would have been a citation. <laughs> no, Brandon, we cite oh. we give you a citation of the third wheel. Oh. I, I mean, would like to point out. I that, do, yes. I do you do have, have I, I a do pass. Have the pass from Sean, except for I will not be using it right for this time. Okay. Are you I'll, sure? I'll take, I'll take You're not gonna loss. just throw us all under the bus again like you did the last time? <laughs> no, I will. I'll take the loss this time, but I still, I still have the pass in my name for later use. <laughs> you do. You Sensational. Do. Indeed. All right. Uh, well, Brandon, would you like to apologize to our viewers <laughs> for your harsh language? <laughs> for your dirty mouth. Uh, uh. It's okay, okay to have your own opinion. Just, no. Uh, just Only when it matters. <laughs> it, make, make it Guys. at the right time, at the right place. When just remember. Make it not in spite of others. <laughs> okay. Guys, just remember, there's nothing wrong with being the third wheel. Because I guess Brian is not as smart, as funny, <laughs> or as competent as he thought he was. Or mm. of clean of heart as he thought he was. Mm. You sick man. <laughs>